In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, I welcome you all with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. I'm your host, Imam Johari Abdul Malik, and this is Living Islam in America. Here we offer a unique perspective on issues that concern us all. Topics that will entertain and enlighten you about the faith and culture of Islam. A faith of over six million Americans and one billion adherents worldwide. Although we can't speak for all Muslims, as our title suggests, living Islam in America will mainly focus on the experiences, habits, and perspectives of millions of Muslims living in the Americas. We invite your feedback and suggestions on how we can make this program better, help it to address the topics and issues that are of concern to you. Up next, we'll take a look at a community clinic in South Central Los Angeles, where the phrase, taking back our community, has taken on a whole new meaning. After that, meet me back here with my guests for an interesting discussion on whether the aspects of Islamic Sharia law should be implemented for Muslims in the United States. All that and more coming up next on Living Islam in America. The Archbishop of Canterbury ignited a debate when he said that Islamic Sharia should be integrated into state law in the United Kingdom. To address the questions raised by this, I'd like to welcome our guest today. First, Marcia Moberg. She is a conflict analyst for the Institute for Conflict Analysis and Resolution at George Mason University. And my good friend, Dr. Imaduddin Ahmed, who is the president of the Minaret of Freedom located in Bethesda, Maryland. Dr. Imaduddin is an internationally known uh, interdisciplinary scientist and author of Signs in the Heavens, a Muslim astronomer's perspective on religion and science. He is also the senior lecturer at the University of Maryland, where he teaches courses on religion, science, and freedom. With that introduction, Dr. Imaduddin, I'm going to start with you. Uh, this controversy around incorporating or involving the ideas of, quote, Sharia law. What's your opinion? What is it, what is it that creates the, the tension? And what is Sharia law anyway? Well, Sharia literally means the path to the well in Arabic. Uh, why does it become a synonym for Islamic law is a good question. The relationship between the path to the well and a map of the path to the well is the relationship between the Sharia and the, what we call the jurisprudence or the fiqh. Mm. The sharia is the law as God has made it. The human attempt to understand that law, to articulate it, to codify it, that is the fiqh. And it's subject to the same reconsiderations humans have whenever they right, try right, to but, understand. But the loaded part of this question about, about sharia mm -hmm. is that sharia, people are afraid of it, that it's God has laid down the ten commandments and they're set in stone and they ain't going to change. Is that what Sharia is? No, that's the fix that they're thinking. I mean, it's not set down in stone uh, any more than the um, laws that scientists give as the laws of nature are set down in stone. Law, like? Law of gravity has changed enormously. It was originally, Aristotle said it was the tendency of things to be at the center of the universe. Then Newton said it was a mutual attraction between any two bodies. Then Einstein said it is the curvature of space. This is the benefit these, of having a physicist on These are very different <laughs> concepts, but yet no, no one has ever claimed that gravity has changed. Okay. It's always been what God has decreed right, it to be. So, so there is a part of it that, is, that, that has a universal principle attached to it, and people's ability to understand, to apply something like that? The concept of Sharia is an admission that there is an absolute objective law given by God and that we are trying to understand what that law is. Our understanding can change with time and has. It, originally, there were multiple schools of Islamic thought. Even today, among the Sunnis, they have four schools that mutually accommodate and recognize one another. They may disagree, mm. uh, but they respect one another. Uh, so, so the idea is that uh, that we try and, to... And the Shia have some schools, and too? And the Shia also have their oh, okay. schools of, of law. 
So the we're not gonna talk about that today, though. No, I understand. But, but from from another vantage point, uh, this issue that the Archbishop has raised uh, is setting off alarms. Some people are saying, well, if they have this 14th century old uh, Islamic uh, rules and regulations, uh, it's going to be bad for women. Right. Exactly. And and I would I would say that most of the Muslim women in Britain actually feel uh, completely the opposite. They would feel more comfortable if they went to a judge that was going to rule on something that they agreed on uh, when they got married so, in the first so, place. Right. When you say agreed, what, what are you talking about? When people get like when people get married here, mm -hmm. they go in front of the the minister and I do and I do and it's all over. What when you say agree agreed to? What are you talking about? Well, this agreement is actually the contract that they signed together with their, their spouse um, in front of an imam that provides qu clear guidelines on what exactly would happen if they were to get divorced. So part of this discussion we're having, we're talking about applying these concepts of, of a, a malleable faith-based opinions, but they're not set down by other people. You're saying to me that the the people getting married what well you have to understand that in islamic law all human relations with one another are contractual relations ah, okay okay now they're within the the domain of the restrictions of what's permissible and what's forbidden by by the understanding of islamic law but that range is very very broad and therefore, many of the items that we normally think of involving uh, questions like divorce mm -hmm. are things that can actually be negotiated between the man and the woman. For example, I read an okay. article in which there's a criticism saying, well, if we allow Sharia uh, div uh, marriage contracts, mm -hmm. uh, then the, uh, what the woman would get in the case of, a uh, uh, woman can't initiate a divorce unless she makes certain financial concessions. Well, this is not necessarily true. In fact, if the woman puts into the marriage contract that she has the right to initiate a divorce without any financial concessions. Then, that's uh, but part not, of the contract. Right, but so what happens then, Marcy? If, if you've got this this idea that you've got a marriage contract, is this what the this is what the Archbishop is talking about? That within the framework of civil civil contracts, is that the issue that he's talking about? Exactly. He's talking about civil contracts for marriage and divor divorce. That these. I've been the reading too many of those books. Divorce. <laughs> <laughs> and the, that these the Sharia laws would would uh, constitute what would happen in those cases when women would get when spouses and um, couples would get married or divorced, and it would d elaborate on what what would happen in those cases. And the, again, going back to the beginning of why this is so contentious, mm -hmm. especially here in the United States, the in 2007 uh, the Pew Institute did this. Uh, survey and 70% of Americans see um, Islam that they don't see any commonalities between their religion and Islam. So there is this huge misperception between Muslims and non-Muslims in America as well as in Britain. I mean, in Britain it's even more contentious right now.